One of the most powerful aspects of the InDesign interface is the control panel and it appears up above your documents from left to right and it will fill the entire screen. It has lots of information on it and all of that information relates to whatever you have selected. If you have a text box selected, then it will show text information. If you have a graphical element selected or a box or a line or something like that, it will show information related to graphical elements. Let's see some of the differences in the control panel based on our selections. First, let's select the title Special Offer. Now, Special Offer is a frame all by itself, and it's hard to tell that until we move our mouse over the words Special Offer. You'll see that the frame itself will light up, in this case it's blue, and it allows us to see the container for that text. Click it once to select it. In the control panel, it doesn't look like text because we haven't yet selected the text. Instead, we've selected the container for the text. If we double click on the word special, then we'll be selecting the text of the word special. Now you can see that the control panel has changed to reflect text information. I can see the font, I can see the style, I can see the size and the letting, as well as other features of that text. A new feature of InDesign CS5 is that we have direct access to the color of the text. So I can select the phrase and then change its color easily right in the control panel. Having made my selection, I can click on the color indicator here and this will open up my color swatches. Let's make it green. Now the text is green, although it's hard to tell until we deselect the text. To deselect, simply click somewhere else, typically out in the pasteboard. Now we can see that that text is green. If we move our mouse over some graphical objects, we get slightly different indicators. Let's switch back to the selection tool, which is the closed arrow tool at the top of our toolbar. Before you click, notice that if you hover over a tool, you'll get some hints. If you type a V, for instance, then that will switch to this tool. You can also use the Escape key to go back to the Selection tool. Now I've chosen the Selection tool. And as I hover over Plucky Pony Toys logo, you can see that something happens. In the middle of the logo is a target, and that target is called the Content Grabber. Notice if I hover my mouse over the Content Grabber, my mouse changes to a hand. This means that when I click on that content grabber, I'm going to be selecting the picture itself. Now, there's a difference here between the picture and the container in which the picture sits. This is an important aspect of the way that InDesign documents are structured. You have the container, which is the frame where the various content lives, and then you also have the contents of the frame. It's important to note that when we're working with graphics and we're working with text, we could be talking about either the container or the contents, and I'll be clear about it as we move through the training. For now, let's not click on the content grabber. Instead, click around the outside edge and we will select the frame itself, not the contents of the frame. Looking at the control panel now, we see that we have different information. On the far left, you can see there are nine dots. These nine dots represent the nine positions of a rectangular shape, which would be the container in which our content sits. We have the corners, we have the top, bottom, left, right, centers, as well as the center of the object that we can choose it to learn more about. Click on the center indicator right here. Now you can see that the X and Y positions have changed to reflect the center position of that frame or of that object. We can move things by typing new numbers in the X and Y coordinates. We can also change the shape of an object by changing its width and its height. We can also control rotation. We can control reflection. There's lots of different styling that we can achieve here in the control bar. Note also that we have direct access to fill and outline color as well. We'll talk more about some of the ways that we can style graphical elements later on in the training. The control panel can also be modified. Over on the right you'll see a drop down menu that allows you to make changes to the control panel. If I choose customize then I can see some of the options for the control panel itself. 
Right now I have everything turned on. However, we can turn off, for instance, the object indicators. Click OK to accept the change. Now you'll notice that the control panel has gone blank. It's gone blank because we have an object selected and not a text item selected. If I double click on special, now I get my text information back again. Let's reset the control panel to its earlier state. Click Customize to change the appearance of the panel itself. Let's re-enable all of the object controls. If you twiddle down to the left of Object, you'll see that there's a lot of granularity. Many of the workspaces that we've talked about earlier do focus on specific aspects of the control panels as well as other parts of the interface. Again, click OK to accept the change.